गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः गुरवे सर्वलोकानां विषजे भवरोगिना निधये सर्व विद्यानां दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः हरि हियो नहि ज्ञाने न सदृशम् पवित्रम् इह विद्यते तत्स्वयं योग समसिद्ध काले नात्मानि विन्दते ब्रह्मार्पणम् ब्रह्मः विहि ब्रह्माग्नौ ब्रह्मणाहुतम् ब्रह्मेनते न गन्तव्यम् ब्रह्मकर्म समाधिना Very happy Navaratri to all of you. What needs to be managed is the mind. What needs to be experienced is the no mind. The skill of managing the mind is yoga. And this skill is essential to uncover the no mind. Just like you know a clock is always ticking in the background and the tick tock noise is drowned in the external noise. The moment everything is switched off, your AC people talking and everything, when you are about to go to sleep, then you can very clearly hear the clock in the background. So, when the noise of the mind settles down, then the no mind becomes obvious. That is why the role of a master becomes so very important on the path. The master is one who has this ability to arrest the mind so that he can step into the no mind at his will. And in his presence, in his or her presence, even you experience that shift of focus from the mind to the no mind. That is why you might have experienced if you have been in the presence of an enlightened master, suddenly you become a bit goofed up, all your questions disappear, you wanted to ask so many things, suddenly you do not know where you are, what you are, what to do, what not to do, because the mind which is so logical suddenly evaporates and all possibilities open up. So, this managing of the mind is very essential. All the sadhana that we do is to manage the mind so that we can move into the realm of no mind. When you have been on the path for some time, you would have experienced this state of no mind more and more. Yes, we all experience during the Kriya every now and then and more clearly in the silence programs when you are in silence. And the more silences you attend, the more silence you experience, the more easy it becomes to step over the mind. And for a seeker, after a while being in sadhana and listening to knowledge like most of you have been. They get a good idea about what is real, what is unreal, what is temporary and what is permanent, but then there is a problem. 
in spite of knowing what is important and what is not important, they struggle to focus fully on what is more important. Arjuna has this problem. Now Krishna has told everything, but still he thinks, I know that this is important, but still why is my mind going in that direction? Also sometimes if you have been on the path for a while, as a seeker you may become very complacent. You may think, no, I have been doing my Kriya for 5 years, 6 years, I do my Sahaj every day, I attend silence programs regularly, I do my rituals, I have got my own Upasana, I am very spiritual. The yardstick is not what you do, not what you engage in, but how you engage in your practices. You see what I am saying? In the previous chapter, Krishna spoke about some of the parameters. He said, if the distortion such as lust, anger, and greed are moving away from you, if their intensity in your life has come down and if your ability to accept the life has increased, then you are making progress. But if you are still easily pushed off your balance, if still your vices are strong, then maybe all that you have been doing is just very superficial, there is no depth to your practices. So very aptly in these final stages of the Gita, Krishna is giving the fine touches. He is saying, well you are doing your practices, but are you doing it the way it should be done? Is it making an influence and impact on you or is just your mind playing games with you again? So, Arjuna asks Krishna, Krishna you said a sattvic personality is one who is sincere, has faith, has a say over the senses, is enthusiastic, is focused. And another point also you said the only actions to get engaged in is those that are prescribed by the scriptures. Now what if an individual is sincere, is focused, is has a say over the senses, is disciplined, is passionate, has faith, but is doing everything without any regards for the prescription of the scriptures. The tradition, the traditional wisdom says it has to be done like this, but he is not giving that much importance to that, but he is having all the other qualities of a daiva of a sattvic personality. Where do you put such an individual? Is he a sattvic or a non-sattvic person? See, though we are all seekers, yet we are all at different stages in our evolution of our consciousness. We are all nothing but energy compressed energy into name and form. And this individuality which we have in our consciousness as we discussed before has seven components. The individual jiva expresses chaitanya which is the unchanging pure consciousness. Sukha, dukkha, raga, dvesha, sanghata and druti. Sanghata is the proportion in which the five elements have come together. And Dhruti, there is no exact translation for Dhruti in English. You can call it a combination of perseverance, commitment, patience, discipline, focus, all these things put together becomes Dhruti. Now these two are main variables, the Sanghata and the Dhruti and depending upon the variability of these, your nature, your innate nature or Prakriti or 
what you call a constitution is created that differentiates at the level of the jiva between individuals. And this difference in the prakriti is what gives rise to the different gunas and based on what is the dominant guna in you that is what your attraction that is what your adoration that is where your mind runs in the world. You see what I mean? Say for example a weekend comes up like this is a weekend now. A lot of people their attitude towards a weekend is ah not having to go to work I can sleep till 10 o'clock I can binge eat I can sleep again watch as much television I can be lazy I've got no commitments no obligations this is how I realize this is my weekend that's why I look forward for my weekend there will be another set of people who would say wow I get some extra 10 hours which I wouldn't get during the weekdays so I probably can do my sadhana even more relaxedly every day because of the pressure of work I may not be able to eat food the way I like and eat what I like. Now I can be a little more mindful about my practices. I can have time for reflection, for studying, for being mindful about my food. I can do a bit more exercise. I can do long yoga sessions. These may be two people working in the same department, same place of work, but the way they handle the time that is available to them is different. You see what I mean? Somebody might say, you know what, I am meeting the same people every day at work, so I want to go and meet new people, I want to socialize. Somebody else might say, you know what, daily I am meeting people, I want some time for myself, so I will go on a solo trip somewhere. I will go for a long walk, long drive by myself. Same situation, two different ways of looking. So it all depends upon your innate prakriti. This is what Krishna says. Krishna says, Every person, every individual is born with an innate prakriti and the quality of that innate nature will determine what he is interested in. What is it that attracts him or her? Which direction they take? How they use their time and their resources? What they prioritize? And based upon this, based upon their innate nature, we can have three types of faith which you can call this sattvic rajasic and tamasic faith or you can call a sattvic consciousness rajasic and tamasic consciousness what is it that this consciousness moves towards and krishna says the one with a sattvic evolution of the consciousness adores devas the divine and wisdom what is it that you look forward in your life if you look forward to being with knowledge, being with yourself, being in silence, then that is a sattvically evolved consciousness. So a person with a sattvic consciousness adores divinity and wisdom. And somebody with a rajasic attitude, what do they adore? They adore yakshas and rakshasas, Krishna says. Yakshas indicate wealth, Rakshasa indicates strength, power. So if your focus in life is mainly to accumulate wealth and to become more powerful, more famous, then you are a Rajasic personality. Your faith is Rajasic, your attitude in life is Rajasic. And then what is a Tamasic attitude? A Tamasic individual adores Bhuta and Preta. Bhuta Preta means that aspects of life that are life negative. You know the sadistic and masochistic people who like to inflict pain on others and feel happy about it. Or people who feel happy talking about their own pain. Oh, I am a victim. Look how life has been unfair to me. That which is not life affirmative but finding joy in it, finding an identity in that, that is a tamasic attitude. Smoking, alcohol, drugs, they are in no way uplifting your evolution. But then going behind them, being attracted to them, being attracted to the company which takes you there, this is a tamasic attitude. 
Krishna says people think by doing austerities, by engaging in some activities, some practices, they are far higher than other people. But when such activities are done in ignorance, when it is done not as prescribed by the scriptures, they do not realize that they are not only making themselves weak and inflicting pain among themselves, but they are also torturing the divinity that is within me. I am sitting in them and they are torturing me and causing me pain and distress as well. Hmm? See, it is common practice for people to fast during Navaratri. Yeah? So, fasting is a discipline, it is very good for the body, it gives rest to your digestive system. But it should be a process which fits your constitution as well. If you are never fasted if, or if you do not fast the entire year and then suddenly what oh, is Navaratri, I am going to fast, if you have this attitude, that is not a wise way of doing it. You see what I mean? If you have been doing a Ekadashi fast, fasting once or twice every month for a while, you know, your body knows what to do when food is not up, coming up at the same at the time it expects. Or if you are somebody who is very disciplined with the food, say during the weekend you do not do too much activity, you also reduce your food intake, then the body has some intelligence how to deal with scarcity of food, lack of food. But just doing for the sake of doing it, what happens? It just makes, takes away the sanctity. The purpose of fasting is, fasting makes your senses weak, it makes your mind weak and it is very easy to tame a weak mind. So, you can easily step over the mind. But if you are a Pitta personality and if you are fasting, especially in a country like this where the fire element is already high, then the fire element rises up, it will make you restless, angry, irritable. Yeah. So, it, it, you need not do that. No God has ever asked you to fast and torture yourself. Yes, of course, it is good from a health point of view, from a from a deepening of practice point of view, but know whether your body suits it. Drink water, have some fruits, have some juices. So, the body is nourished at the same time the mind is weakened as well. Anything that weakens the body as well will just make you drowsy and irritable. So, just an example. So, when you engage in mindless austerities without respecting the body and mind, instead of doing any good to you, it may actually harm you. And Krishna says, this by harming, there people do lot of things, sleeping on nails, walking on fire, in the name of austerities. These are all not necessary, walking barefoot. Only when you are able to keep your body and mind comfortable and disciplined, you will be able to rise above the mind. Yeah? So, it is very important and while speaking on this, Krishna says there are a few other things a seeker should be aware of, I am going to enlighten you about this and that is food and activity. Says, depending upon your nature, once again you are not only attracted to different types of divinity or adoration, you are also attracted to different types of food. So, then he says, what is a sattvic person attracted to? What is a rajasic person attracted to? What is a tamasic person attracted to? What type of food he is attracted to? See, this is very important for a seeker discipline in the food. Food is one of the most underrated aspects of spirituality or even if it is not spiritual, people just do not regard food, the importance it needs to be given. Just by having a little discipline, little awareness of what you eat, how you eat, you can make a huge difference in the quality of rest you get, in the depth of your meditation. So, Krishna mentions this, three types of food, says what is a sattvic food, what is the food that a sattvic person like, that food which enhances Ayuhu, Sattva, Bala, Arogya, Sukha, Preeti, Vivardhanaha, that which enhances your lifespan, that which brings vitality, strength, health, that which is naturally taste, 
you don't have to add anything to make it tastier that which has got a natural taste to it and that which enhances the pleasantness in you preeti vivardana rasya snigda stira hridya that which is succulent that which is very juicy has a lot of water content that which is easily digestible that which the body does not feel a strain to digest it that which brings stability to you such type of foods are liked by somebody who is a sattvic personality hmm? i don't have to give you examples what are such foods you know foods which lot of water content which are fresh which are high prana which don't need to be cooked or you don't need to add any additives to make them edible fruits salads juices sprouts all these things and which are easily digest to make you feel light then the rajasic foods this is where the danger comes all the food that are our favorites krishna quotes here katu amla lavana ati ushna tikshna ruksha vidahinah katu means one something which is very bitter amla which is very sour lavana very salty ati ushna very hot tikshna tikshna means that which is irritant you know when sometimes when some some types of food is being cooked you keep sneezing and coughing that which is irritant aruksha means that which is very dry vidahina that which is very spicy ahara rajasya eshta dukkha shoka amaya prada these are the types of food which a rajasic person will like something which is very sweet very salt very bitter very spicy very pungent extremes of taste are what trigger the rajasic personality in you and you like that type of food and what do they bring when you when these become your favorite and you engage in them dukkha shoka amaya prada they bring pain they bring grief they bring disease the source of grief pain and disease are the rajasic type of foods then what are the what type of food does a tamasic person like yata yamam gata rasam puti paryushitam cha tat uchchistam api cha amedhyam yata yamam means that which is not cooked very well gata rasam that which is not fresh puti means that which is spoiled paryushitam paryushitam is polluted polluted can be physical and mental somebody has prepared with not clean hands all not a clean attitude was very sad or irritable with that attitude uchchistam left over that which is not clean which is been eaten and left over by somebody amedhyam amedhyam once again means uh, what do you say unclean like not in a clean environment like you know if you go out to this eat your pani puri and everything in the on the streets you see how they wash the plates you know they just take the plate dip it in a bucket and give it back to you uh, and the same plate which has been eaten by many 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 people i don't know how many people use the same plate in a day so every interaction you have every place you sit everything you touch leaves a part of you there if hundreds of people have touched and eaten in the same plate all those impressions are hanging around so these are the types of food or which you like depending upon what type of quality your consciousness has taken then he starts talking about action when he says action he speaks about three realms yajna tapa and dana what is yajna yajna is an action prescribed by the scriptures as your responsibility as something which you need to do to preserve the order in the creation everybody has a role to play in this creation so that the balance is restored 
the balance is maintained hmm? and that action which maintains the balance the harmony in the creation the existence is yajna so when you go to chapter 3 i think chapter 3 krishna talks about this isn't it what annad bhavanti bhutani parjanya tanna sambhavah yajnat bhavati parjanyo yajna karma samudbhavah karma brahmodbhavam viddi brahmaksara samudbhavam tasmat sarvagatam brahma nityam yajne pratishthitam so he says look you are not an isolated you are not an island in this creation all beings are sustained by food food is sustained by rain rain is sustained by yajnas and the source of yajnas are the actions and the right actions or karma is prescribed by the vedas and the vedas the source of vedas is the brahman which is me so by engaging in yajnas on a regular basis what will you do you will be engaging with me because it is my intention my intention that is been translated into action is a yajna tasmat sarvagatam brahma nityam brahman ya nityam yajne pratishtam so everything is sourced from the brahman which is me so engage in yajna then he also says evam pravartitam chakram ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾರ moham mogam parthasa jeevati and his life is an utter waste you have come into this life to relieve some of your karmic obligations and to move towards freedom but if you move away from that purpose then the whole purpose of this life is a waste you see what i am saying you are in the school you do all the exams you attend all the class you do all your homework you attend all the classes but when it comes to exam when you say i'm not going to write the exam what will happen you will have to repeat the same year again so that whole year had been a waste for you similarly if you don't engage in what has been prescribed to you then this life becomes a waste so that is yajna and what are the types of yajna krishna says ಅಫಲಾಕಾಂಕ್ಷಿಭಿ ಯಜ್ಞವಿಧಿದೃಷ್ಟೋ ಯಾಜ್ಯತೆ ಯಷ್ಟವ್ಯಂ ಎವೈತಿ ಮನಃ ಸಮಾಧಾಯ ಸ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ ಯಜ್ಞ ಅಫಲಾಕಾಂಕ್ಷಿಭಿ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಮಚ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ದ ಔಟ್ಕಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಿವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ with this attitude when one engages 100% in an action such a yajna is satvika see we can we can relate this same to your sadhana as well how do you engage in your spiritual practice that is also a yajna your sadhana is a yajna because that brings some balance in the system either you can do oh i love to do my sadhana i cannot be without it or you can say oh if i don't do it or if i do it i will get this 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 benefit i'm more calmer i'm more focused my blood pressure is under control i'm more healthier that's why i want to do my sadhana this is a rajasic attitude and tamasic attitude is oh i have to do it out of compulsion and irritation no faith the same thing you can do for your work as well either you can go to work because you love what you are doing or you can go to work because oh at the end of the month i get a salary to get something or you go oh my god i got no escape from it i have to go to work so ignore the attitude in which you 
love the process itself and you are ready to engage with it fully and your focus is not on the outcome of that what i am going to get out of it that is a sattvic yajna you know when we were doing the silence program recently for a few weeks we had stopped one of the people they called me said when are you restarting every sunday evening i get a withdrawal symptom i want to be there and i feel so lost without the sessions so this is a sattvic attitude where you have this craving for knowledge craving for the highest craving for wisdom where you look forward to it because you are not looking at getting something out of it just being there you feel joyful you feel blissed this is a sattvic yajna abhisandhayatu phalam dambhartam api chaivayat yijyate barata shreshta tam yagna viddhi rajasam what is a rajasik yajna when you start that action itself you have got one eye on the result you are actually initiating that to get something out of it abhisandhayatu phalam your your eyes are on the fruit already dambhartam api or you are doing it as a show off where you can boast you know i have been meditating for 20 years hmm? or doing big big rituals as a show of that you know i can also do something like this i can chant all this so very well i can do this i can do that there is no inner stability there is no inner bliss that you are getting out of that action but it's a hypocritical action a showing off that i can do this i can do this and that sort of action where an action is focused on getting something or an action which is a showing off that is a rajasic type of yajna vidihinam asrushtannam mantra vihi mantra hinam adakshinam shraddha virahitam yagnam tamasam parichakshate so what is the tamasic way of doing a sadhana or doing a ritual or doing a yagna shraddha virahitam there is no faith first of all you got no honor for the practice at all it's just a tick box exercise i did my kriya today i did my meditation today i sat today i did my fasting today another tick box shraddha there is no honor to what you do vidihinam not doing as it has been prescribed you man you finding your own way of doing something you have been told to do do this few times or don't do it two times three times but you think you know i can manage i will do this this way i can modify this a little bit more not as prescribed asrushtannam means where there is no prasada when you do a ritual you invoke all the deities and say well you are come here then you give them all the aposhanam and all you give panam what do you do you give them water to clean their hands clean their feet to clean their mouth you give them a seat you give them food you decorate them you bow down to them you give them tambula you give them you know all this this is there in the vidhi of any ritual they will say all this you are giving similarly once you have done the ritual all those people who have come there you see the same divinity and you treat them in the same honor you respect them and then you also give them nice prasadam so asrushtanam is where there is no scope for prasadam you are not honoring your guests which may be the divinity here or the div- people the divinity in the people around you a prasadam so there is as- asrushtanam means not where there is no annadana where there is no prasada being offered in a ritual mantrahinam where you don't use any mantras means once again not doing as per prescription adakshinam dakshina dakshina means expressing gratitude skillfully dakshina murti somebody who, who give, provides knowledge very skillfully daksha means skill dakshina is an action which involves skill skillfully you express gratitude a ritual or an act where there is no gratitude you know when you do your kriya or your meditation when you say you feel so good you feel grateful for the privilege having access to something like that that has a much more greater depth so when you do engage in an activity how not as prescribed without having a prasadam 
offering prasadam without using the proper mantras, without offering gratitude and when there is no faith, it has been done just as a tick box exercise. Such type of activity, such type of yajna or a ritual is considered as tamasic. So, the two, two words in it, Anubhava and Abhinaya. Your engagement in a ritual or a practice, is it just a role play, is it Abhinaya or is it an Anubhava? Are you experiencing what you are doing? Are you moving from sound to silence or moving from sound to more sound? Is this ritual or is this spiritual practice taking you from noise towards silence? from movement towards stillness or is it just making you more restless? Hmm? That indicates the quality of the yajna. Then he moves on to tapa. What is tapa? Tapa literally means frying. Yeah? The heat of life when it fries you, how do you deal with it? The attitude of dealing with the opposites in life without resistance willfully that is tapas. Knowing that all that I am experienced is what I have signed for in my life anyway. While coming into this life I had signed an agreement with the divinity that all these are going to be part of my life and I agree to go through them and doing so willingly without resistance is tapa. Here Krishna from from the viewpoint of a seeker talks in terms of discipline. What is discipline? That which brings some discomfort to begin with, but at the end gives much deeper joy and rest is discipline. Some initial discomfort, long lasting benefit that is discipline, that is where you need a discipline, is not it? You want to do low, you, want, you do not like yoga, but then you go to the yoga session and then you engage yourself. You do not want to run or exercise or swim, but then you go through that process. It brings slight discomfort, but then the end result is very beneficial. That is discipline, and in discipline, there are two ways, it can also be called as a rule. It could be self imposed imposed by somebody else. You know, as a parent, you impose some discipline on the child, okay. Now is the screen time is off, now is lunch time, now is dinner time. You have to now go to the gym, you have to, have to now study. When a discipline is imposed from externally, it becomes a bondage. When you take on the discipline by yourself, this is called shasana and anushasana in the yoga sutras. When he is self imposed discipline, you say, I have signed up for this. I want to be disciplined in my food. I want to do some exercise. I want to do my sadhana. That is a much higher quality of discipline where you willingly take up the responsibility for yourself. And in tapa, Krishna speaks about three aspects. What are they? Tapas of the body tapas of speech and tapas of the mind, sharirika tapas, vangmaya tapas and manasika tapas. What are they? Deva, dvija, guru, pragna, poojanam, shaucham, arjavam, brahmacharyam, ahimsa, cha shariram, cha shariram tapa uchyate. So, what is the tapas of the body, discipline of the body? Honoring Deva, Dvija, Guru, Pragna, honoring and worshipping Deva, the divinity all around. Dvija, Dvija means twice born, an initiated person, one who is initiated by the Guru, he is a Dvija. When you come into this world, your parents give you a name. The society gives you an identity, oh I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim, I am an Indian, I like this IPL team, I like that food. You create your own identity. When you come to the master, he takes away all that and says, no, 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 you are pure consciousness. He says, you are that, tattvamasi and then he says, 
let's drop all this from today you are born new your identity is not all these small little things but the highest is your identity identify yourself with the brahman with the spirit and one who is now he is born again he is left he leaves his old life and is born again such a person is called as a dvija and one who has made this commitment to leave behind a small identity and take on a bigger identity he is called a dvija guru you know what guru is pragna the wise person one who gives knowledge the highest priority says so these four type categories of people what do they represent they represent the sattvic aspect of any society deva dvija guru and pragna and he says one who can respect your ability to honor these four personalities is part of a sattvic tapas or sharirika tapas why is it important because whatever you adore and honor those qualities start appearing in you have you noticed if you are a fan of a celebrity sooner or later their mannerisms come to you 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 dress like them you try to have a haircut like them you talk like them you walk like them have you seen this whatever you adore those personalities are imbibed in you and if you adore this sattvic personalities of the society their qualities automatically start appearing in you then how do you do other qualities shaucham arjavam brahmacharyam ahimsa no? these things are mentioned even in the yoga sutras shaucham is purity cleanliness water should run through you and outside you as well having external and internal cleanliness shaucham purity arjavam sincerity sincerity is very 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 essential for a seeker if you are not making progress being sincere about it if you are not having great experiences being sincere only when you know where you stand you can make a plan where you want to go being sincere that i don't know i don't know where i am i don't know where i want to go can somebody can you teach me that brings that is bhakti sincerely accepting your limitation and surrendering to a master or a wise person sincerity arjavam brahmacharyam everyone is endowed with limited amount of energy and resources on the physical realm on the material realm how you use and prioritize this depends upon how much progress you make and how quickly you make a progress on the path the mind pushes you externally because mind says joy is there outside in the world how do you get that joy through the senses you will get that joy and every time you engage through the mind through the senses into the world you feel drained tired because every sensory pleasure drains you when you seal these outlets of going outward and turn the mind inward and move towards the source of joy you use the same energy which was draining away and channelized inward that quality of you is brahmacharya brahmacharya means what walking towards the brahman walking towards your own self not walking towards the material realm which is walking away from the brahman but walking towards the brahman is brahmacharya conserving the energy and focusing the energy on something that is really relevant and uplifting ahimsa ahimsa is lack of aggression do you see how aggressive are you aggression need not be only in your body it can be in your speech in your attitude to life so these qualities what worshipping or respecting deva dvija guru and pragna the wise cleanliness sincerity brahmacharya moving towards focusing on the self and ahimsa dropping the aggression this is called as the sharirika tapas you know discipline is one area where you can exercise your free will discipline is not destiny that is where you can make a choice and 
focus where you want to prioritize things focus your energy and your resources so sharira tapas and what is vangmaya tapas what is tapas of speech anudvega karam vakyam satyam priyahitam cha yat swadhyaya abhyasanam cha evam vangmayam tapam uchyate the purpose of words is to create silence do your words create silence or more noise in the environment in people do your words does your speech distress people or cause distress in people anudvega karam words that don't distress cause distress in the people or in the environment around you satyam priyahitam that which is truthful but also told in a pleasant way this is a real skill you know some people say being blunt is being truthful if somebody is oh he is he is an idiot so i'd call him an idiot somebody you cannot does not have eyes calling him a blind person that is truth but that is not the way there is no skill there is no dakshata in your activity you know when you speak about children you got some limitations you don't call them disabled children you call them gifted children because when one faculty of you does not work well nature automatically makes some other faculty very sharp people who can't see very well their hearing is so sharp their sense of smell is very sharp yeah so speaking truth but in a very pleasant and a skillful way so engaging in words which does not excite or distress people speaking the truth but speaking it in a very putting it in a very pleasant way across swadhyaya abhyasanam and using speech for reflection and abhyasa for discussion for discussing knowledge not for gossip have you noticed when you discuss knowledge how uplifted all the tiredness disappears in you do you see this but when you gossip for 20 minutes you feel so drained so using speech for swadhyaya for self study for reflection and abhyas for discussing knowledge that is called tapas the discipline of speech what is anudvega karam vakyam words that don't distress words that are truthful and pleasant and soothing and the words which are used to reflect upon your own life reflect upon this existence and to discuss knowledge in such a way if you use your speech that type of that is called as the discipline of speech tapa vangmaya tapa then what is the tapas of the mind manah prasadah saumyatvam maunam atma vinigraha bhava samshuddhi iti bhava samshuddhi ityetat tapo manasam uchyate having a pleasantness in the mind when you are awake when you are interacting with people or when you are with yourself what is the state of your mind are you pleasant or are you restless and irritable are you passionate or are you always behind something or are you always busy 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 or you are chilled out and relaxed mana prasada having that pleasantness and cool attitude in the mind saumyatmam gentleness maunam mauna is silence not much noise of the mind ability to keep the mind aside and use it only when you want it not being run by the mind this is maunam experience of having the depth of silence atma vinigraha not swayed by the senses having a say over your senses and able to know when to be engaged when to withdraw pravrutti nivrutti when to speak when to keep silent when to engage when to withdraw this comes from a mind 
which is controlled, which is in control, atma vinigraha, bhava samshuddhi, this is very beautiful, having pure intentions, sincerely wishing well for everybody, sincerely blessing everybody, sincerely wanting everyone to be happy and doing all that you could do to bring this happiness, to uplift the consciousness in the universe, bhava samshuddhi. Your actions may all be very, very noble, but inside if there is no purity in your intentions, then those actions do not carry much weight. Bhava samshuddhi, ityeta tapaha, such type of discipline is called as the tapas of the mind, manasam uchyate. Hmm? I think we will stop here today, hmm? we will continue next time, we will look at uh, the other aspects of so this is this is very beautiful you see just before he explains renunciation he is now telling don't be very arrogant that you have been a seeker for a long time but see what is the quality of your seeking what is the quality of the practices you are engaged in is it really making any sense are you making real progress hmm? the intricacies of the practices krishna is opening up here, hmm? very beautiful, very good, very good. Hmm? Jai Gurudeva. Hmm? Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Umbhunattu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamas Tuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadradi Pashyantu Makaschiddukkabhat Bhavet Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Hari Yom Shri Guru Bhyornamaha Hari Yom